first discovered uh, real tennis in 1986. Uh, I answered a job ad in the local newspaper and I went along to the club and walked in and my eyes kind of blew wide open and the rest is kind of history. I grew up uh, around the corner from the Hyde in Dorset. My parents still live there. I grew up in Bridport, so down, down at the Hyde. Ben Ronaldson was the pro at the time. Me and my brother were just mucking about on a summer holidays. So I was maybe age 12. I was doing an A-level and PE. Real tennis was on the syllabus very, very briefly. Um, it's like a big section of history of sports. We snuck in, never knew it was a real tennis court. There was no kind of signs there, even though we grew up in the village. Having a court so local, we went and had a go, um, basically as a, as a class, and then um, that was the first and only time I played. And there were a couple of fire doors, I think we were mucking about playing whatever stupid games we were playing, terrorising the neighbourhood. And then like six months later they were advertising for a trainee pro, and I was stacking shelves at Morrison's I think at the time, like in a, uh, we'll call it a gap year. And we snuck in the fire doors and Ben came and found us and kind of just said like, what are you two scallywags doing? I thought this has got to be better than, than stacking shelves. Applied for the job and somehow got it and I'm st yeah, still in a gap here. Found out I played lawn tennis, ended up going for a real tennis intro and, and that was it, I was kind of hooked. So I sort of stumbled across it as a kid. So uh, I grew up in a village in Essex, which is not far from Preston Hall. Uh, so I was really lucky actually. I found it when I was 11 years old and uh, we moved to just two miles down the road from Preston Hall. I think I was watching lawn tennis. It might have been the uh, Stella Artois Championships on TV. As a kid, I was uh, 10 years old. No one in my family had played, but my dad had seen it being played um, at Cambridge and said, okay, let's go down and have a go at this game. I said I wanted to try tennis. My parents looked up in the yellow pages and Preston Hall was the nearest tennis club. And I went there and Matty Ronaldson and Ricardo Smith were the two professionals at the club. And they were coaching tennis and real tennis. Ever since then, big part of my family life. So I tried both out and uh, I just fell in love with real tennis and, and kept playing and uh, yeah, really, really fell in love with it from there. And as they say, that the rest is history. Grew up on Hailing Island. Um, both parents are teachers and in, involved in sports. So then I kind of always played ball sports as a kid. Uh, I grew up on Hailing Island um, and sort of found the game. I played squash a bit when I was, I guess, sort of like eight or nine. I got into squash and lawn tennis at Seaport. Lawn tennis was rained off when they took me on to real tennis and I remember just seeing a couple of shots and was like, it's just so different. Stumbled across the game, just walking past it. Um, one of the pros asked if I wanted to go on and, you know, 20 years later, I'm still playing, just completely hooked me. So I come from squash, so, you know, real tennis, up until I moved to Bristol uh, back in 2013, I've never heard of real tennis. So uh, I started playing the game when I was nine, so my dad played, he played rackets at school and then moved to Manchester, so he was a member of the club. I remember the moment where I made the switch from rackets to real tennis and that was in um, September 2017 when I had just retained and uh, defended my ladies rackets world title and I needed more, I needed a, a bigger challenge. Yeah, I started hitting balls when I was nine, just sort of playing with my dad. Took it a little bit more seriously when I was 15, 16. People at Queen's, because I was a member at Queen's uh, at the time, they said, hey, you should try this game and there's this amazing lady called Claire who would be a good fight for you and I'd be like, Huh, okay, yeah, I'll give it a go. I'll, I'll you know, I'll put myself 100% in that game. Yeah, I always knew I wanted to be a player. I um, used to read the TNRA annuals, wanted to be in the book, uh, playing in the tournaments. So that was my main like motivating factor, really. I remember going up to Ben Rolson at the time, exposing my project, and he looked at me like, what? And, you know, because I said that to him, having not struck a real tennis ball before. Um, just wanted to be a proper player. I'm lucky enough to be able to compete at that level now. And after an hour, he came back to me and said, hey, I believe in you, you're going to do this. And so, yeah, that's probably why I'm still here, trying my best. And, you know, ever since that moment, I was uh, into real tennis. And going forward, I left the games of squash and a little bit of rackets on the side to focus primarily on real tennis. So I always grew up with the game with my dad being a uh, real tennis professional and he started up the oratory. My dad was a professional, uh, Mark Edel, ran the oratory for 25 years with Jonathan Howe, Nicky's uh, dad, so we're quite close. I was very fortunate to go to the oratory school and I got to play all the sports, loved them, and always loved real tennis. Didn't, didn't play a heap of it, but loved getting out there. So I grew up basically at the oratory uh, as a toddler running around on court, 
um, very similar to people like John and, and Camden. Thought I'd go for the crazy idea and try and play, make golf a career. And after high school, uh, I tried to play professionally, played a bit on the pay to play tools, spent a year in the PGA system, uh, missed out on getting a tour card in European tour qualifying. And decided that this is not for me. I still want to be good at something. Growing up around it really. So I didn't, I didn't really have a choice. It just happened and it was always going to happen. Dad said, uh, you know, you always, I always thought you had ability for this game, real tennis. And, you know, there's an opportunity in Royal Melbourne. They're looking for a young junior. Would you be interested? I said, yeah, let's do it. And Royal Melbourne just were, were amazing. They said, look, we'll support you if you put in the work and you show us the effort. You'll get to go to all the events you want. I grew up in Melbourne and uh, my mum plays at the Royal Melbourne Tennis Club. And I played a lot of lawn tennis growing up and eventually wandered into the club and thought, you know, I'll, I'll give it a go. My parents match real tennis. So I sort of was born and <laughs> raised in it. <laughs> there was a great group when I was about 18, a, a great group of sort of kids of members who we started just going down occasionally and, and hitting. We used to go on Sunday mornings, uh, Dad, John and I, and we used to do a drill like forehand, backhand, volley, volley and like round the corners for like two hours <laughs> on Sunday mornings. Starting to get behind the bar a little bit too. So it was always, you know, it's a great club. So I started playing a little bit and really enjoyed it. And um, you know, a few things from there just meant I, I kept with the game. Quite often and usually on Sunday mornings, often ended in tears on my behalf because I couldn't hack <laughs> the feedback. <laughs> Do you want the PG version? <laughs> uh, look, I knew John Woods Casey um, from way back when, when we used to play squash. And uh, when he joined as a pro at the Royal Melbourne Tennis Club, I sort of came along, uh, picked up the game and never looked back. My nan um, was interested in oldish buildings and things around well, Australia, I guess, but specifically in Tasmania where, where we live. My dad is a crazy, he's a geek. <laughs> My dad is a crazy tennis historical guy and he has a lot of tennis books. She heard of this old building in Hobart, um, 1875, which did some tennis related stuff. He read about real tennis being uh, in the Netherlands. So there used to be a hundred courts in the Netherlands around 1500. I was um, subbed in to her for the excursion, um, went along with her. Um, Found the, found the entrance with some difficulty and uh, had, a, had a look. So he did sort of research on it and he found out there were still courts in the UK. So he started playing about 35 years ago. I was offered a couple of free lessons and uh, I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Let's, let's jump on court, try that out. And uh, found there was a few other juniors who also played similar age to me. Uh, since then we have uh, a week one week a year to hold our Dutch championships in the UK. Started playing squash when I was about 17 and through that played in a squash team where I met Nick Wood. So I was a student at Middlesex University um, and they have an internship program. And then I ended up going to university relatively nearby to Hampton Court. I didn't have anywhere to live so I ended up staying with Nick uh, at the Palace and that's when I first saw the game. I really, I didn't like real tennis to start because I'm a lawn tennis player and the walls would throw me off completely. And we became closer through that whole thing. I'd occasionally get, you know, called up when I was at uni, I'd run across town and, and go and play this game that I had no idea what was going on. So I, you know, they, it was actually Jed Eden was the person that was there at the time. We were actually due to play golf uh, after I'd finished university. I wasn't really doing much. I was living out of my van at the time and stuff like that. And you kind of, mentioned an opportunity was there. Brought me in and then after like a year of playing, I started to get the hang of bounce and stuff and I kind of got into it a bit more. When I first went, actually, I was pretty, <laughs> I was pretty firm that I didn't want to sign a long contract. I was just there to do some admin. I needed like a reliable income for a little bit. And then, um, and then once I got there, just fell in love with the whole thing. Yeah, so it was, a, it was an interesting start.